This is a recording of an article on Wikipedia and was recorded by user Popular Outcast. The material recorded is current as of the May 21, 2008 revision of the article. But I'm a cheerleader from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. But I'm a Cheerleader is a 1999 satirical romantic comedy film directed by Jamie Babbitt and written by Brian Wayne Peterson. Natasha Leon stars as Megan Bloomfield, an apparently happily heterosexual high school cheerleader. However, her friends and family are convinced that she is a homosexual and arrange an intervention, sending her to reparative therapy camp to cure her lesbianism. At camp, Megan soon realizes that she is indeed a lesbian, and despite the therapy, gradually comes to embrace this fact. The supporting cast features Clea Duvall, Kathy Moriarty, RuPaul, Mink Stoll, and Bud Court. But I'm a Cheerleader was Babbitt's first feature film. It was inspired by an article about conversion therapy and her childhood familiarity with rehabilitation programs. She used the story of a young woman finding her sexual identity to explore the social construction of gender roles and heteronormativity. The costume and set design of the film highlighted these themes using artificial textures in intense blues and pinks. When it was initially rated as NC-17 by the MPAA, Babbitt made cuts to allow it to be re-rated as R. When interviewed in the documentary film, this film is not yet rated, Babbitt criticized the MPAA for discriminating against films with homosexual content. The film was not well received by critics who compared it unfavorably to the films of John Waters and criticized the colorful production design. The lead actors were praised for their performances, but some of the characters were described as stereotypical. The following is a listing of the contents of the article. Section 1. Plot Section 2. Cast and Characters Section 3. Background and Production Section 3.1. Conception Section 3.2. Set and Costume Design Section 3.3 .3, Casting Section 4 Themes Section 5 Rating and Distribution Section 6 Reception Section 6.1 Box Office and Audience Reaction Section 6.2 Critical Section 6.3 Awards Section 7 Music Section 7.1 Track Listing Section 8 Adaptations Section 9 References Section 10 External Links The following is an info box which accompanies this article and gives a summary of the main information about the movie but on the cheerleader to supplement the arrangement of information in this article. The movie was directed by Jamie Babbitt. It was produced by Leanna Creel and Andrea Sperling. It was written by Jamie Babbitt, the story, and Brian Wayne Peterson, the screenplay. It starred Natasha Leon, Kathy Moriarty, Group Paul, and Clea Duval. The music was written by Pat Irwing. The cinematography was by Jules LeBarth. Editing was done by Cecily Brett. It was distributed by Lionsgate Films. The release dates for the movies were September 12, 1999 at the Toronto Film Festival, July 7, 2000 in the USA, November 16, 2000 in Australia, April 13, 2001 in the UK. The running time of the movie is 85 minutes. The country of the movie is the United States. The language of the movie is English. The budget of the movie was one million U.S. dollars. The gross revenue of the movie was two million five hundred ninety-five thousand two hundred and sixteen U.S. dollars worldwide. 
This info box contains external links to the All Movie Profile and the IMDb Profile for this movie. The info box also contains an image with the caption, Original Movie Poster. Section 1, Plot The film introduces 17-year-old Megan, played by Leon, a high school senior who loves cheerleading and is going steady with football player boyfriend Jared. She does not enjoy kissing her boyfriend and prefers looking at her fellow cheerleaders. Her family and friends suspect that Megan is in fact a lesbian, and with the help of ex-gay Mike, played by RuPaul, surprise her with an intervention. Following this confrontation, Megan is sent to True Directions, a reparative therapy camp which uses a five-step program, similar to Alcoholics Anonymous's 12-step program, to convert its campers to heterosexuality. At True Directions, Megan meets the founder, Mary Brown, played by Moriarty, Mary's son, Rock, and the group of young people trying to cure themselves of their homosexuality. With the prompting of Mary and the other campers, Megan agrees that she is a lesbian. This fact, at odds with her religious upbringing, distresses her, and she puts every effort into becoming straight. Early on in her stay at True Directions, Megan discovers two of the boys, Dolph and Clayton, having sex. She panics and screams, leading to their discovery by Mike. Dolph is made to leave, and Clayton is punished by being forced into isolation. The True Directions program involves the campers admitting their homosexuality, rediscovering their gender identity by performing stereotypically gender-associated tasks, finding the root of their homosexuality, demystifying the opposite sex, and simulating heterosexual sex. Over the course of the program, Megan becomes friends with another girl at camp, college student Graham, played by Dubow. The group is encouraged to rebel against Mary by two of her former students. The ex-ex-gays, Larry and Lloyd, take the campers to a local gay bar where Graham and Megan's relationship develops into a romance. When Mary discovers the outing, she makes them all pick at Larry and Lloyd's house, carrying placards and shouting homophobic abuse. Megan and Graham sneak away one night to have sex. When Mary finds out, Megan, now at ease with her sexual identity, is unrepentant. She is made to leave True Directions and goes to stay with Larry and Lloyd. Graham, afraid to defy her father, remains at the camp. Megan and Dolph, who is also living with Larry and Lloyd, plan to win back Graham and Clayton. They go to the True Directions graduation ceremony, where Megan performs a cheer for Graham and tells her that she loves her. They drive off with Dolph and Clayton. The final scene of the film shows Megan's parents, played by Stoll and Court, attending a P-Flag meeting to come to terms with their daughter's homosexuality. Section 2, Cast and Characters Natasha Leon as Megan Bloomfield When confronted with evidence of her homosexuality at Two Directions, Megan counters, quote, I get good grades, I go to church, I'm a cheerleader, end quote. Clea Duval as Graham Eaton a college student and the daughter of wealthy parents who threaten to disown her if she does not change her sexual orientation. Graham is comfortable with her own sexuality, but afraid of living openly as a lesbian. Kathy Moriarty as Mary J. Brown, the founder of True Directions. Although it is not mentioned in the film, Babbitt's backstory for Mary was that her husband is a homosexual who ran off to San Francisco. As a result, it is her life's mission to help young gay people to turn straight. Moriarty describes her character as, quote, Sandra D. on crack, end quote. RuPaul as Mike, ex-gay and Mary's right-hand man. Mike wears a t-shirt that proclaims, quote, straight is great, end quote, and tries to teach the boys at True Directions to become more masculine. Mink Stoll is Nancy Bloomfield, Megan's mother. Megan's parents are Christians who want Megan to follow the role in life that they believe God has set for her. Bud Court as Peter Bloomfield, Megan's father. Melanie Linsky as Hilary Vandermuller, who adheres closely to the rules of True Directions and graduates. Joelle McKaylee as Joel Goldberg a young Jewish man who desperately wants to be straight and eventually graduates from True Directions. Kit Pardue 
as Clayton Dunn, a quiet young man who works in retail. Catherine Town, as Sinead Lauren, a goth girl who says she likes pain. Sinead is attracted to Graham and is later jealous of Graham's relationship with Megan. Despite this, Sinead graduates from True Directions. Douglas Spain, as Andre, who describes himself as, quote, actor, dancer, homosexual, end quote. He fails to convince Mary of his heterosexuality and is asked to leave True Directions before graduation. Eddie Cibrian as Rock Brown, Mary's camp and passive son. Rock works as a handyman at True Directions and, although supposedly straight, appears to lust after Mike. Dante Basco as Dolph, a varsity wrestler who begins a relationship with Clayton. Dolph is then kicked out of True Directions and goes to live with Larry and Lloyd Morgan Gordon. Katrina Phillips is Jan, a softball player who has been sent to True Directions due to her butch appearance. Jan eventually comes to realize that she is straight and leaves True Directions. Richard Mole as Larry Morgan Gordon, XX gay and one of Mary's former students who runs what Megan calls the, quote, underground homo railroad, end quote, with his partner Lloyd. They try to give True Directions campers an alternative viewpoint on homosexuality with trips to the local gay bar. Babbitt based the characters of Larry and Lloyd on XX gays Michael Boussy and Gary Cooper, formerly of Exodus International. Julie Delpy as lipstick lesbian who Megan meets and dances with at a gay bar. Wesley Mann as Lloyd Morgan Gordon, XX gay and partner of Larry. Brent Will as Jared, Megan's football playing boyfriend. Michelle Williams as Kimberly, head cheerleader and Megan's school friend. Kimberly suspects Megan of being a lesbian and participates in her intervention. Ioni Sky as Kelly, reformed lesbian in True Directions promotional video. Section 3, Background and Production But I'm a Cheerleader was Babbitt's first feature film. She had previously directed two short films, Frog Crossing in 1996 and Sleeping Beauties in 1999, both of which were shown at the Sundance Film Festival. She went on to direct the 2005 thriller The Quiet, and the 2007 comedy, Itty Bitty Titty Committee. Babbitt and Sperling, as producer, secured financing from Michael Burns, then the vice president of Prudential Insurance, and now vice chairman of Lionsgate's Entertainment, after showing him the script at Sundance. According to Babbitt, their one-sentence pitch was, quote, two high school girls fall in love at a reparative therapy camp, end quote. Burns gave them an initial budget of 500,000 U.S. dollars, which was increased to 1 million U.S. dollars when the film went into production. Babbitt, whose mother runs a halfway house called New Directions for young people with drug and alcohol problems, had wanted to make a comedy about rehabilitation and the 12-step program. After reading an article about a man who had returned from a reparative therapy camp hating himself, she decided to combine the two ideas. With girlfriend Andrea Sperling, she came up with the idea for a feature film about a cheerleader who attends a reparative therapy camp. They wanted the main character to be a cheerleader because it is, quote, the pinnacle of the American dream and the American dream of femininity, end quote. Babin wanted the film to represent the lesbian experience from the femme perspective to contrast with several films of the time that represented the butch perspective, for example, Go Fish, and The Watermelon Woman. She also wanted to satirize both the religious right and the gay community. Not feeling qualified to write the script herself, Babbitt brought in screenwriter and recent graduate of USC School of Cinematic Arts, Brian Wayne Peterson. Peterson had experience with reparative therapy while working at a prison clinic for sex offenders. He has said that he wanted to make a film that would not only entertain people, but also make people get angry and talk about the issues it raised. Section 3.2, Set and Costume Design Babbitt says that her influences for the look and feel of the film included John Waters, David LaChapelle, Edward Scissorhands, and Barbie. She wanted the production and costume design to reflect the themes of the story. 
There is a progression from the organic world of Megan's hometown, where the dominant colors are orange and brown, to the fake world of true directions, dominated by intense blues and pinks, which are intended to show the artificiality of gender construction. According to Babbitt, the germaphobic character of Mary Brown represents AIDS paranoia, and her clean, ordered world is filled with plastic flowers, fake sky, and PVC outfits. The external shots of the colorful house, complete with the bright pink picket fence, were filmed in Palmdale, California. Section 3.3 .3, Casting Babbitt recruited Clea Duval, who had starred in her short film, Sleeping Beauties, to play the role of Graham Eaton. Babbitt says that she was able to get a lot of the cast through Duval, including Natasha Leon and Melanie Linsky. Leon first saw the script in the back of Duval's car and subsequently contacted her agent about it. She had seen and enjoyed Babbitt's short, Sleeping Beauties, and was eager to work with the director. She was not the first choice for the role of Megan. An unnamed actress wanted to play the part, but eventually turned it down because she was too Christian and did not want her family to see her face on the poster. Babbitt briefly considered Rosario Dawson as Megan, but her executive producer persuaded her that Dawson, who is Hispanic, would not be right for the all-American character. Babbitt made a conscious effort to cast people of color for minor roles in an effort to combat what she describes as, quote, racism at every level of making movies, end quote. From the beginning, she intended the characters of Mike, played by RuPaul, Dolph, Dante Vasco, and Andre, Douglas Spain, to be African-American, Asian, and Hispanic, respectively. She initially considered Arsenio Hall for the character of Mike, but says that Hall was uncomfortable about playing a gay-themed role. As Mike, RuPaul makes a rare film appearance out of drag. This section contains an image with the caption, The True Directions Campers Pick at the XX Gays, the intense colors were intended to show the artificiality of gender construction. Section 4, Themes But on the Cheerleader is not only about sexuality, but also gender and the social construction of gender roles. One of the ways in which Babbitt highlighted what she called the artificiality of gender construction was by using intense blues and pinks in her production and costume design. Chris Homeland, in Contemporary American Independent Film, notes this feature of the film and calls the costumes, quote, gender-tuned, end quote. Ted Gideons, in Out Magazine, wrote that the costumes and colors of the film show how false the goals of True Directions are. Gender roles are further reinforced by the tasks the campers have to perform in, quote, step two, rediscovering your gender identity, end quote. Nikki Sullivan, in A Critical Introduction to Queer Theory, says that this rediscovery is shown to be difficult and unsuccessful rather than the natural discovery of their latent homosexuality. Sullivan says that the film not only highlights the ways in which gender and sexuality are constructed, but also takes the norms and truths about heteronormative society and renders them strange or queer. Homeland says that Babbitt makes the straight characters less normal and less likable than the gay ones. Sullivan says that this challenge of heteronormativity makes, but I'm a cheerleader, an exemplification of queer theory. An image accompanies this section of the article with the caption, Graham and Megan attempt to reinforce their gender roles through performing traditional female tasks. Section 5, Rating and Distribution when originally submitted to the Motion Picture Association of America Rating Board, But I'm a Cheerleader received an NC-17 rating. In order to get a commercially viable R rating, Babbitt removed a two-second shot of Graham's hand sweeping Megan's clothed body, a camera pan up Megan's body when she is masturbating, and a comment that Megan, quote, ate Graham out, end quote, slang for cunnilingus. Babbitt was interviewed by Kirby Dick for his 2006 documentary film, This Film Is Not Yet Rated. A critique of the MPA's rating system, it suggests that films with homosexual content are treated more stringently than those with only heterosexual content. 
and that scenes of female sexuality draw harsher criticism from the board than those of male sexuality. American Pie, also released in 1999, which features a teenage boy masturbating, was given an R rating. Babbitt says that she felt discriminated against for making a gay film. The film was rated as M for mature audiences in Australia, 14A in Canada, 12 in Germany, and 15 in the United Kingdom. The film premiered on September 12, 1999 at the Toronto Film Festival and was shown in January 2000 at the Sundance Film Festival. It went on to play at several international film festivals, including the Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras Festival and the London Lesbian and Gay Film Festival. It first appeared in U.S. theaters on July 7, 2000, distributed by Lionsgate Films. Fine Line Features had intended to distribute the film, but dropped it two months before it was due to open following a dispute with the film's production company, Ignite Entertainment. It closed after eight weeks, with its widest release having been 115 theaters. The film was released on Region 1 DVD by Lionsgate on July 22, 2002, and by Universal Studios on October 3, 2002. Other than the theatrical trailer, it contained no extras. It was released on Region 2 DVD on June 2, 2003, by Prism Leisure. In addition to the trailer, it features an interview with Jamie Babbitt and behind-the-scenes footage. A table accompanies this section of the article. It states ratings for different countries. In Australia, this film was rated M. In Germany, it was rated 12. In Ireland, it was rated 18. In the United Kingdom, it was rated 15. In the United States, it was rated R. Section 6, Reception. Section 6.1, Box Office and Audience Reaction. But I'm a Cheerleader grossed 2,205,627 U.S. dollars in the United States and 389,589 US dollars elsewhere, giving a total of 2,595,216 US dollars worldwide. In its opening weekend, showing at four theaters, it earned $60,410, which was 2.7% of its total gross. According to Box Office Mojo, it ranked at 174 for all films released in the U.S. in 2000 and 74 for R-rated films released that year. As of October 2007, its all-time ranking for LGBT-related films is 68. The film was a hit with festival audiences and received standing ovations at the San Francisco International Lesbian and Gay Film Festival. It has been described as a favorite with gay audiences and on the art house circuit. Section 6.2 Critical Critical response to But I'm a Cheerleader was mostly negative. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a score of 35% based on 43 reviews, and Metacritic gave it a score of 39% based on 30 reviews. The overall theme of reviews is that it is a heartfelt film with good intentions, that is flawed. Some reviewers found it funny and enjoyable with, quote, genuine laughs, end quote. Roger Ebert called it the type of film that, quote, might eventually become irregular on the midnight cult circuit, end quote. Others found it obvious, leaden, and heavy-handed. Writing for the New York Times, Elvis Mitchell described the character of Megan as a sweet heroine, and Leon and Duval were praised for their performances. Mick LaSalle called Leon wonderful and said that she was well matched by Duval. Marjorie Baumgarten said that they, quote, hit the right notes, end quote. Alexandra Mendenhall, writing for AfterEllen.com, felt that the relationship between Graham and Megan having great chemistry does not get enough screen time. Mitchell called their love scenes tender. Other characters, particularly the males, were described as off-putting, End quote, nothing but stereotypes. End quote. Several reviewers compared the film to those of director John Waters, but felt that it fell short of the mark. Stephanie Zasharek called it a Waters knockoff, while Ebert said that Waters might have been ruder and more polished. 
Babbitt says that although Waters is one of her influences, she did not want her film to have the bite of his. She states that whereas John Waters does not like romantic comedies, she wanted to tell a conventionally romantic story. The production design, which was important to the overall look and feel of the film, drew mixed responses. LaSalle described it as clever and eye-catching, and James Berardinelli called it a standout feature. Others found it to be gaudy, dated, cartoonish, and ghastly. Stephanie Zasharek, writing for Salon.com, said that with regard to issues of sexual orientation and homophobia, Babbitt is preaching to the converted. Cynthia Fuchs for NitrateOnline.com agreed, stating that, quote, no one who is phobic might recognize himself in the film, end quote, and that, quote, the audience who might benefit most from watching it either won't see the film or won't see the point, end quote. David Edelstein said that the one-sidedness of the film creates a lack of dramatic tension and calls it lazy counter-propaganda. In contrast, LaSalle said that, quote, the picture manages to make a heartfelt statement about the difficulties of growing up gay, end quote. And Timothy Sherry said that the film openly challenges homophobia and offers support to teenaged gay viewers. Chris Holmland said that the film shows that queer identity is multifaceted, using as an example the scene where the ex-ex-gays tell Megan that there is no one way to be a lesbian. Reviews from the gay media were similar to those from the mainstream press. Jan Stewart, writing for The Advocate, said that although the film tries to subvert gay stereotypes, it is unsuccessful. She called it numbingly crude and said that the kitsch portrait of middle America is out of touch with today's gay teenagers. Mendenhall, for AfterEllen.com, called the story predictable and the characters stereotypical. Despite these comments, she said that overall the film was funny and enjoyable. Curve called the film an incredible comedy and said that with this and her other work, Babbitt has redefined lesbian film. Section 6.3 Awards The film won the Audience Award and the Grain de Cinefage Award at the 2000 Critel International Women's Film Festival an annual French festival which showcases the work of female directors. Also that year, it was nominated by the Political Film Society of America for the PFS Award in the categories of Human Rights and Exposé, but lost out to The Green Mile and Boys Don't Cry, respectively. Section 7, Music The composer for But I'm a Cheerleader was Pat Irwin. The soundtrack has never been released on CD. Artist features include Indiax, Saint Etienne, Dressy Bessie, and April March. RuPaul contributed one track, Party Train, which Eddie Cibrian's character Rock is shown dancing to. Section 7.1 Track Listing Track 1 Chick Habit Written by Eleanor Blake and Serge Gainsbourg Performed by April March Track 2 just Like Henry, written by Tammy Elam, John Hill, Rob Green, and Darren Albert, performed by Dressy Bessie. Track 3, If You Should Try and Kiss Her, written by Elam, Hill, Green, and Albert, performed by Dressy Bessie. Track 4, Trailer Song, written by Courtney Holt and Joy Ray, performed by Sissy Barr. Track 5, All or Nothing. Written by Chris Owen and Misa. Performed by Misa. Track 6, We're in the City. Written by Sarah Cracknell, Bob Stanley, and Pete Wiggs. Performed by St. Etienne. Track 7, The Swisher. Written by Dave Moss and Ian Rich. Performed by Summer's Eve. Track 8, Funnel of Love. Written by Kent Westbury and Charlie McCoy. Performed by Wanda Jackson. Track 9, Ray of Sunshine. Written by Go Sailor. Performed by Go Sailor. Track 10, Glass, Bass, Cello, Case. Written by Madigan Shive and Jen Wood. Performed by Tattletail. Track 11, Party Train. Written by RuPaul. Performed by RuPaul. 
Track 12, Evening in Paris, written by Lois Mafio, performed by Lois Mafio. Track 13, Together Forever in Love, written by Go Sailor, performed by Go Sailor. Section 8, Adaptations. In 2005, the New York Musical Theater Festival featured a musical stage adaptation of But I'm a Cheerleader, written by librettist and lyricist Bill Augustin and composer Andrew Abrams. With 18 original songs, it was directed by Daniel Goldstein and starred Chandra Lee Schwartz as Megan. It played during September 2005 at New York's Theater at St. Clement's. Section 9, References there are references available in the written form of this article. Please be sure to verify information found on Wikipedia using the references provided or cross-referencing the information yourself. Section 10, External Links This section includes a list of external websites where you can find additional information on the subject matter of this article. External Link 1, But I'm a Cheerleader at the Internet Movie Database. Link 2, But I'm a Cheerleader at Rotten Tomatoes. Link 3, But I'm a Cheerleader at All Movie. Link 4, But I'm a Cheerleader at Metacritic. This section also includes a link to the Wikiquotes project, which provides a collection of quotations related to But I'm a Cheerleader. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html.